welcome back to our Planet of the Apes marathon that we're finishing up, but it's long overdue. Now, in the last film, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, we see how intelligence entered into the apes and how uh, it was originally a drug that was designed for uh, Alzheimer's, to cure Alzheimer's. But now things have advanced in the second installment of the newly Planet of the Apes, newly portion of the Planet of the Apes series, I should say, with Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Yes, this one continues on Caesar's adventures, so, so to speak. Um, by this time, things get a little bit more grim and things get a little bit more darker in, as the series goes on. So, you'll find out what happens to in and after the movie to find out what I think of it. The movie is rated PG-13 for, let's see, some intense sequences of sci-fi violence, action, and brief, strong language. So I will, again, flash up. The viewer discretion is advised because some of the language is pretty strong and it is even though it is brief um, the f-bomb is dropped once and that's about all you can drop in a pg-13 movie movie stars uh, uh, Gary Oldman Carrie Russell Andy uh, Andy Serkis and uh, let's see who else there's another one another big star hold on hold on hold on Jason Clark yes so yeah, again, dim the lights, grab your popcorn, grab your soft drinks, whatever it is your choice, and let's watch Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. So yeah, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah, this is a film where they show that things have come head to head between the humans and the apes. Definitely... The apes are on one side, the humans on, are on another side. And there's no mingling whatsoever. Of course, in the film, we know that, that there, there is mingling with, between, the, between the apes and the humans, but each time, it is not good. Yeah, if you notice that. So... Things are starting to escalate by this movie. Uh, you have two villains. You have one human villain, and you have a ape villain. Human, uh, the human villain is played by Gary Oldman, more of a military type of guy who's willing to save the human race. And you have on the ape side, Koba, who is pro ape. And very loyal to, so supposedly very loyal to the apes, but until he gets, what he really wants is the leadership that Caesar has. And of course, if you remember from the first film, Koba was the one who was tortured constantly. He was beaten, he was, and that's why you see all the scars on his face, on his side, and, and yeah. This film, I think, is a good continuation from the first film. Uh, interesting thing with, with all three films, um, the, hum the good humans are not the same humans each film. So, unlike the previous entry entries, like in the old series you have Ricardo Montalban being in two films as he's a friend of Caesar and... Um, Charlton Heston is in two films because he realize, they realize that he's not a bad guy or what he is, but he, they're just trying to figure out, okay, this human is talking. Well, in this film, is at that mid-range period where the apes have are completely intelligent and how they're communicating is signing. They are sign using sign language. And then by the end of the film, the apes, all the apes begin to actually vocalize and speak and in broken, in broken English. And I think that's very, very, very well done uh, because uh, 
that just shows that they are evolving by the end of the film. And then, as you'll see in the next film, they become even more intelligent. Also, playing upon the part of that there's a virus that has taken over and killed a good percentage of the population. So yeah, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. There's, there's also references to the, uh, to battle for Planet of the Apes. If you notice, ape not kill ape. That's a take on the phrase that was used in Battle for the Planet of the Apes, which is "ape shall never kill ape." So yeah, it's kind of neat to see that each of these films are kind of harkening back to the original films even though um, they did change some minor things it's not again it's not so much about communism or the cold war it's very um it's more modern in what's going on in our society now like all the new strains of viruses that are popping up uh governments the corrupt governments and of course um, in, in, in this film the government has completely collapsed and it's just hanging on actually it's just hanging on by a thread but it is collapsing and so yeah it's very it, they found a way to modernize the Planet of the Apes series and uh tell it in such a way that that we as uh, can relate that we as humans the, uh, the American movie going audience can relate to these to the what's going on on the screen because the film the film series is very very social commentary of what's going on so yeah that's dawn of the planet of the apes very well done again uh, they even advanced uh, some of the technology that was that from the first film, and and a big thing was in uh, the fur uh, that Weta uh, expressed. It was in the fur, like uh, you know, like the ability to age and uh, moisture and the elements and things like that. So yeah. So now we'll move on to the to the final film. The next time so yeah take a look next time at war for the planet of the apes where it all comes to an end so yeah so from me to you see you later